Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's vlog, I will be starting a new series where I will show you the steps I take when conducting genealogy research by doing actual research on the family trees of other YouTubers. <laughs> For what I'm going to call our first season, we'll be looking at the family tree of Sam Aronow. Sam Aronow is a YouTuber whose channel focuses on Jewish history using interesting maps and imagery. Sam's focus on Jewish history isn't limited to just the history of the people, but also discusses the history of the religion. And after discussing it with Sam, he agreed to be the first guest on this new series. Now the first place to start for anybody is to start with what you know. So Sam needed to get me a family tree of what he knew. For Sam, he actually had a family tree that was fairly well built out, which is not surprising considering that he has an interest in history and many people who have an interest in history build pretty good family trees. So what we'll be doing throughout the series is we'll be going through the different parts of his family tree and researching different things and trying to discover different questions. But as we go along that journey, we're not going to just try to expand what Sam gave us, but we're also going to make sure that what Sam gave us is correct. Having been doing this for years, not just as a professional, but for fun, doing my family tree, doing my friends' family trees, even doing family trees for coworkers during downtime. And what I've discovered along the way is that a lot of people will have family trees with incorrect information in it. So as we go along, we'll be looking to confirm what we have as well as expand on it. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up with research questions. At this point, we have a very broad question. Basically, can we expand Sam's tree? But the best way to actually do genealogy research is to organize. So we're going to go through separate branches and come up with more specific research questions in those branches. What's most likely going to happen is with each branch, it's going to be a lot of very similar questions. And as we go along in the research, we might even discover more research questions that are going to be even more specific because maybe we'll find out about something that they do and we're curious what was the outcome. So for this first episode, we're going to start with Sam's Aranau family. And for this series, we are going to limit what we view on these branches. So I've created trees that we will then build off of that won't include a lot of information just for privacy reasons. So to start out, we're going to look at Jacob Aronel's tree. Jacob is Sam's great grandfather. So looking at this tree, we can see that Sam has given us a lot. We have Jacob and his wife. We have multiple siblings for Jacob. We have a brother, Sam, a brother, Morris, a sister, Ethel, and a sister, Anna. We have dates of birth, including locations for many of the siblings, but most importantly for Sam's ancestor, Jacob. And we can also see that he has Jacob's parents and even Jacob's grandfathers. So as I mentioned, one of the first things we wanna do is we wanna go through and confirm this family tree. There are a few ways to go about this, and this will also deal with when we try to expand the tree. And that includes the differences between looking at your hints, doing searches, or what's uh, often just called browsing, and doing actual research. So when we're discussing about hints, that's like when we're looking at ancestry and we see these leaves and we hit that leaf and we can see four ancestry hints. So it's very straightforward. It's when you have a family tree in one of these programs and they're literally giving you hints about what documents might be related to these people. When we're talking about searching, searching is just when you do broad searches using different browsers. So that could be ancestry search when we do all collections. That could be when you go to family search. It could even just be doing Google. It's just doing a search for certain terms and basically hoping that you find something that connects to what you're looking for. And then the third researching is when you start to get very specific in what you're looking for and going through much more than just searching. Often this will 
deal with going through things that are not searchable or not indexed. So an example that we could talk about digitally, because a lot of people will be doing things digitally, is on Family Search, they have wikis where you can actually look at what's available for a certain area. So if we're looking for a certain ancestor, like with Joseph, we see that he's from Miglin. Hope I'm saying that right. But it's from Briansk, Russia. So we'll go to the Family Search Wiki. And I think the best way to go about that is to go to Google and you can just do a search genealogy Briansk. And more than likely, the wiki will be one of the first things that pop up. So we see Family Search Wiki, Russia genealogy. So we'll hit that because we do know that it's going to be in the Russian Empire. And then we get all this information about the different areas, and we're going to be looking for Bryansk. Um, so one thing that you can do, so we here we see Bryansk gets an oblast. Um, one thing you can do if you know how to pull up your finder, you can try to just type Bryansk. Um, sometimes you'll pull up things, sometimes you won't. But when it comes to researching, you're doing a lot more in-depth work. Usually it's a bit more of that detective style work of finding a clue, following it, and then going somewhere. So a common one, especially since we're dealing with Jewish genealogy, and we will be dealing with this a few times throughout the series, and that's going to Jewish Gen's Town Finder. So you can just go to jewishgen.org, go to the databases, and go down to Town Finder. And so we knew we were looking for Miglin. So we could just do a search for that, and there we go. We get a whole page on Miglin, and we can get more information and find clues that will help us find more information. So now we're going to go back to the tree, and basically what I want to discuss is my process. And the way that I like to do it is I like to start with hints, then go to searching, and then go into researching. Now, sometimes things will change a bit. Maybe I'll be going through hints and it'll find something that is really interesting that I think, okay, if I can find something specific about that, maybe I can find all sorts of information and then I'll go straight into a researching phase. But one thing we want to do is we want to come up with some, some research questions or research goals that are realistic that will help us in focusing our research. So for this branch, because this is a branch that came to America from the Russian Empire, our big thing is that we want to confirm the town or area of origin, and we also want to confirm the date of immigration. The next main goal will be to try to find documentation on the family back in their town of origin. So with these two main questions, that actually leaves me with a few documents that I know that I want to get. One big thing that we want to get, we want to find the manifest record from the immigration. So if we find the manifest record, that's going to give us a lot of great stuff. And that's going to tell us the exact date of when they arrived in the U.S. And sometimes not only can you find manifest from their arrival, you can also find manifest from the departure. So you'll get two manifests, one from the beginning of the trip one from the end of the trip. We'll also be wanting to obtain any naturalization records. Those are going to be big because those will often confirm the towns. That'll often give us much more accurate birth dates, although not always. And sometimes if we're having trouble finding the manifest, if you can find the naturalization record, that will sometimes include information about the manifest, especially if that person had a different name on the manifest than what they were going by at that naturalization point. And then the third record that we'll want to find are any draft records for anyone who is of the right age and is obviously a male because males were the only ones who have draft records. And this is because draft records will give us a very precise birth date often, as well as a precise birthplace, although not always. So as I said, the first thing I like to do is I like to do hints because hints, just give it to you right away. So we're going to start with uh, Sam's great-grandfather, Jacob. So here we see we have the hints. And we've got a lot of information that has been supplied from Sam already. 
Um, we have the birth date, which this is in a uh, American style, August 30th, 1937. For those who are in Europe or the majority else, well, elsewhere in the world, you're probably used to 38, 1937. So here we're getting a whole lot. So we have the 1930 census. We have the draft record, one of the things we're looking for, 1920 census. We have uh, deaths and stillbirths. We have naturalization index. We have the naturalization record. We have a find a grave uh, link, some directories, and a naturalization index. So we have a whole lot, two of the three things that we're looking for for Jacob. So let's start out with the draft record. Now, technically, I would start out with the naturalization, but I just want to show all the different things that we can look at. So for Ancestry, we hit review. And I should say, I'm doing this my way. I personally prefer building my trees starting out on Ancestry. Then I will transfer them over to Genie. And from Genie, I will try to link them into the world tree. And often with Genie, you can connect with others who are part of that family tree who have also worked on it which you can do on Ancestry, but personally I feel you can do it much better on Genie or any of the other collaborative trees such as WikiTree or Family Search. Once we get to the actual search phase, you can also go to Family Search and do searches, or if you build your tree on Family Search, you can do the hint phase through Family Search, um, although it's a little bit different. So for Ancestry, here we have the record. We see that it all seems to match up with what Sam gave us. A little bit different, though. So we have birth date, August 20th, 1884. Sam gave us September 5th, 1885. Honestly, this is not that uncommon, even when they have a very specific birth date. So we're not quite sure. We can take a look at it and see. So we see Jacob Aranau. Now, the spelling is a little bit different um, because it's A-R-A-N-O-W, whereas Sam spells it A-R-O-N-O-W, but this is also not uncommon. Some people just had trouble spelling things. You can see his N is backwards, so it almost looks like, you know, he's much more used to writing in Cyrillic, because that looks like, um, one of the Cyrillic letters, but we get the birth date, not quite the same, and a very generic Russian. But we do see that he's a milkman. So now we have an occupation, which is going to be very useful if this is him. And then we see one finger missing, which is very interesting. Um, for those who don't realize, too, um, for the World War I draft records, which is what we are looking at, they will give you a physical description on this page. So we're getting his height, medium, build, medium, blue eyes, brown color hair, and then has this person lost arm, leg, hand, eye, or is he obviously physically disqualified? Specify. And you can get all sorts of interesting stuff looking at that. Now, at this point, this is the first record we've looked at. We have the um, we have a lot of things that we can correlate with it, but what we the information we have doesn't match up quite yet. So I'm not going to do anything. Um, some people may do the maybe when they do that, but personally, I prefer to just go back and just leave it in my hints. Now, one thing we could do is we could go and look at the 1920 census and look at the address and see, okay, residence 1920 Chicago Ward, Rockwell Street, and then we go back to this and we see, okay, 1315 North Rockwell. So could it be them because we have Rockwell Street? So we can look at the 1920 census. And then we see them highlighted here. And we get the address 1315. And that was the address here. So now we know, okay, well, if this is our Jacob, then we know that that is the correct draft. Now, we do know that this is our correct Jacob because the children in the household match up with what we know, as well as uh, Jacob's brother-in-law, Jake Lifshitz, and we know that his wife is Sarah. So we know that the draft is correct, and we can add that. And now here is where you can kind of change things if you want. So you have the option to do it where you can just save as an alternative, um, I'm not going to do that here just cause we're not quite sure. Then we're going to do next. And this is going to add his wife. Now, when you see the new, we already know that he has the wife here. And this is one of the reasons why 
I really don't like the way that Ancestry does this sometimes is that this is actually not a new person. We already have her in the tree. So if we didn't hit that not a new person and then choose Sarah, it would create another spouse. And this is one reason why when you go into Ancestry trees, you'll see people where they have uh, children of a couple listed multiple times in different ways. You'll see they have the same spouse multiple times. And the reason for this is because they're adding these different records. And when they add them, they're not saying, oh, well, this is actually a person I already have in my tree. And because things are just a little different than what they already have in the tree, then they change that to a new person. And that's when you get these trees that are just so convoluted. And it's, it's one of the unfortunate things with ancestries, uh, style, but that's something that's been around for a long time. And ancestry has been around for a long time. So I think it's kind of just one of those things that I wish they would correct, but it's kind of surprising. They haven't necessarily made it easier in my opinion but anyway we have this so we know it's sarah lifshitz we could do as i said we could save as an alternative then it'll try to look for her everywhere as sarah air now we're not going to be researching her at this point but we do want to kind of save that because we may research her in the future because this is another branch of uh, sam's tree so we've added that we could add the census as well. I'm not going to do that right now for one for time and two, we're not focusing on building the family tree forward, which will often be what we can do. But there is one thing we can note from this, and that is the arrival 1914. Remember, one of our questions is we want to answer when did they arrive? And so that's 1914. We can look at the other census 1914 again. Great. So now we have a great idea 1914. But now we're going to go to the naturalization record and we're going to see how's this all matching up. And we can see that it is all matching up. And this is probably where most of the information comes from for Jacob. I would personally choose this birth date over a draft record birth date because of the context of the record. But at the same time, the context of the record is kind of the same as the draft record. It's a government record where I'm pretty sure Jacob was the one that gave them the information. Um, the only difference being that when you're looking at a draft record, sometimes people will lie a bit more on those because if they make their age just a little bit different. Maybe they won't be considered or maybe they'll age out a bit or something like that. But for here, we're going to take an actual look at the naturalization record because one of the things people miss a lot that I do in all of mine is I want to pull up the records because I'm going to be looking at all of the pages around it because it's going to include a lot more. So here's the last page of the guy right before him. So now we're going to go here and we see here's his certificate of arrival. And what's his name? Lieb Aranow, not Jacob, Lieb. We have the date, April 6, 1914, and he came on the SS Maine. Now, I actually did a little bit of research before doing the video. So we're actually going to go and look at Wikipedia because Wikipedia actually has an article on this ship. So here we have the ship that Sam's family came on, and specifically his Aranau family. So the SS Maine in New York circa 1908. Let's take a big look at that. So this is the ship that his family came on in 1914. So we're going to close that off, and we're going to keep kind of looking through, and then we're going to add it in. So we're going to look through. We see... Okay, here's his declaration of intention. So this is the first thing that he puts in. He's intending to become a United States citizen. So he's Jacob Aranow, age 40, occupation, livery man. Um, he has dark complexion. He's five foot four, weighs 135, brown hair, blue eyes, no distinctive marks. Now remember, the draft said he was missing a finger, but the draft was from World War I. This record, we can look down here, is from 1925. So this is just seven years after that. But we get he was born in Starudsky, Russia, which basically matches up with what we had on the next page. It'll be spelled the way that I'm sure we see it. We get his address, 645 East 46th Street. Uh, he came on the main, which we already know. His foreign residence was Russia. His wife, Sarah, she was born at Russia. And then we get some more information along with his signature. 
So now we're going to go on to the next page, and this is where we get the real juicy information. So here we get Jacob Aranau. Not only was he Lieb, he was Yankel Lieb Aranau. So this is huge. This is one of the reasons why we want naturalization records, because they give us great information. So we also get his current residence. He's changed his residence. He's still in the livery business. Here we get that, that spelling that we're used to, Starodub. Probably not saying that right. We have his birth date. He's Hebrew. We get the date of the intention, which we just looked at, uh, and where he put that in. So it was in the Superior Court of Cook County. His wife, they were their marriage date. So August 11th, 1909 in Russia. So this is a big hint because one of the things we're going to now be looking for, one of our next questions is, can we find their marriage record in Russia? And... I will have to see we'll have to see if we can do it, but we'll go through all the techniques on how to do that. But now we have a new question that we'll be looking into because we'll also be looking for other vital records, his birth and then if there will be any deaths. And then a, a big thing will eventually be revision lists and censuses in Russia. But anyway, keeping on with this, we get his uh, wife's birth date. So she was also born in the same area, Starodub, March 10th, 1887. They arrived in Baltimore, May 6th, 1914. And that they uh, reside in Chicago. They have five children. And then here we get the children. So we have Oscar, born July 26th, 1910, in Russia. Ethel, born in Russia, so we know that we'll want to expect them on the um, immigration records because they most likely came with their parents, especially being they were two and four. And then we have all the kids born in the U.S. So we have three, Sam, Bertha, and George. And so all reside in Chicago. And so if this was a family where I was looking for their descendants, which we're not going to be doing that in this series, but if I was looking for the, their descendants, this is the... This is great information. We have exact birth dates with where they're residing and born. Uh, then we also get more information on them arriving. So we already kind of know this. We looked at that uh, arrival ticket. And then we have some more different information. Um, but going down here, you can find some really interesting stuff in the signature, which signatures are great because you can always correlate them with other documents where there might not be any other information to correlate. So like if you find business documents of a Jacob Aronow in Chicago, well, were there multiple guys with the same name Jacob Aronow? Maybe, but you can confirm whether or not it's your same Jacob Aronow by using that signature. I mean, it's the same thing people see on Pawn Stars when they're looking, you know, trying to authenticate a signature it's the same thing you can use those signatures to authenticate other documents as correlating records but we also get witnesses so these are people that knew jacob so if we were to apply the fan research method which stands for friends associates and neighbors although some people say that it stands for family associates and neighbors but either way these are people that knew jacob and researching them may turn up some information on jacob um, we get some other information as well, but we're going to keep, we want to keep looking through until the end of the file, because sometimes there may be pictures in here. Sometimes there may be notes. So I know, uh, on a few of these pages, there will be different places where they could put notes. Um, and then we get different, uh, information in terms of them actually becoming citizens. So here we've gone too far. This is the next person. So I'm just going to go back and this right here. This is the date that the petition was granted. So they were sw sworn in open court on the 6th day of October, 1932. And that was when he became a citizen. All right, so we've gone through that record and now we're gonna say yes, this is the record. So we're gonna go through the name is the same, the birth date and the place are the same. It says different just because Sterodub Bryansk, Russia versus just Sterodub Russia. This is one of the things I wish uh, Ancestry would kind of figure out some sort of system where that can realize, you know, hey, it's the same location, although I understand that can be very difficult. Um, we have the arrival, the exact date, which is perfect, and we have the naturalization petition date, and then we have his wife, Sarah, so we're going to hit next. And look, once again, Sarah, a new person. So if we didn't know, we would have a third uh, wife, Sarah, to, to Jacob. But luckily we know, 
we choose Sarah. So it'll assign this to her. Just because her name's just Sarah, I don't need to really note that. So I'm gonna save to the tree and now it's saved. So the two documents we've saved are right here. So we were looking for the draft, we we're looking for the naturalization, and now we want the manifest. Well, what are we gonna search for the manifest? We're gonna search for Lee Baranow in 1914 because we know that's the name he went by and that's when he arrived and even more, we're gonna look for April 6, 1914, in Baltimore off the SS Maine. So we're gonna do search all location, all collections. Now I'm gonna just do Lieb Aranau, and I'm not gonna put birth dates or anything like that because it didn't tell us what age he said he was when he arrived. Sometimes the age could be really different because the writing is weird and the person indexing it wasn't quite sure. Uh, maybe the way he said it was weird and the person taking the notes didn't realize. So we're just going to do 1914. We're going to do exact and we're also going to make it Baltimore. We know it was Baltimore. And then we're going to do a search. And boom, what do you see? Lieb Aranau, April to uh, 1914 we look at this and we see the ship Maine we got it but when you look down below you also see the naturalization records are coming up what we were just looking at but now we have the main thing that we're looking for and now we're going to get some really good information so when we pull this information up we're going to zoom in and the air now name pops up real quick. <laughs> um, and we want to note the, the numbers of the rows. So we see that Lieb is four. His wife, Sarah, who came in is Sonia. So we have a new name for Sarah, Sonia. She's number five. And then we have the two children, Osher and Ethel, which we knew Oscar and Ethel. But anyway, we have four, five, six, and seven. So we want to remember that. So we're just going to look and kind of make sure does everything match up with what we know. And it probably is going to be. So we have 20, uh, he's age 29, his wife's 26, kids three and one. It's basically matching up. It, we said it was four and two, but the dates could make it so that they weren't four and two just yet. We see calling occupation. Lieb is a butcher. And then we have his nationality as Russia. We also have last permanent residents, Russia and Sterodub, so that's correct. And then we have the name and complete address of the nearest relative or friend in country once alien came. And this can be very helpful, especially when trying to find records back in the area of um, origin. So we get Cousin Aronov R, and we just get Sterodub. Uh, I believe that's Trevsky, Russia. So we're not really getting a whole lot there, unfortunately. We just know he has a cousin with the same last name and a, a first name starting with an R. But now we're going to go to the next page, and we need to remember 4, 5, 6, and 7 because that's the Aranau family. So when we go here, we have the Aranau family, and we get more information. So now we have Final Destination, Chicago, and they're four, five, six, and seven, but they were going to the same place as the guy right here. And then we look here, right here, I'm guessing this is meaning father-in-law in some sort of way. And then here, it's grandfather. So it looks like they wrote Grand F. So now we also get the whether going to join a relative or friend, and we see that it's his father, and I believe that says error now. It's hard to say for sure. And the way that this was indexed was saying that this is FOSS, F-O-S-S. -S. But having looked at the tree, I know what they're actually trying to say is this is Joseph. So that's a J-O-S-E dot, more than likely, something like that. So Joseph error now. And then we get the address, which is hard to read, but it's 1410 North Campbell. Um, and then it doesn't seem to say a whole lot, but now we get something really interesting, which is correlating with that draft record, deformed, crippled nature, length of time and cause loss of left index finger. So he, we remember he said he lost a finger. Well, now we know specifically he was missing his left index finger. And then as we continue to look at the rest, we don't get a whole lot. We get 
his height five foot two, which is actually shorter than what we saw in the dra- uh, in in the other record, which I think had him at five foot four. Um, we do have uh, it says he has blonde hair here and blue eyes before it was black hair. And then we also get that he's from Russia, Starodub. So same thing. But we know that this is the correct person. This is Sam's ancestor. So we're going to go back here. We're going to go to view and we're going to save it. We're going to save to someone in our tree. And you can see I'd already saved it and uh, tree I'd already worked on for this. <laughs> so we're going to look up Jacob Aranow. There we have it. 1885-1937. We're going to attach. And so here we see Lee Bear now, and this time we definitely want to make it an alternative. And then we have the birth. We don't really want to change that. All of that's basically good. We just want to make sure we save this to our tree. So now we've hit the point where we want at this, and that's to have these three. So we have these three, but now we know that his father Joseph was here before him so now we kind of want to just do the same exact thing but with his father well thank you so much for checking out this video I do hope that you enjoyed if you did please be sure to give it a thumbs up that really does help me out you can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe it is completely free to do so and if you'd like to get early access to my content or even more get access to exclusive content be sure to become a patron of mine on Patreon, which I'll be linking down below. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.